Welcome to the Capoeira Experience Podcast, where you are going to learn how Capoeiristas got where they are, how they keep the motivation, why they do what they do, and even how they do business through Capoeira. I hope you enjoy it and learn something from their experience. This episode is brought to you by Mazzuck, mazzuck.com, sports and performance psychology consulting and performance enhancement life coaching, a catalytic process for competent evolution focused on self-discovery and self-mastery. Stop playing small, you can be better. Visit mazzuck.com for more information. Again, that's mazzuck.com. What's up, Capoeiristas? Welcome back to the Capoe Experience Podcast, where you are going to learn from all kind of experiences to increase your knowledge in Capoeira and even uh, to find your why or your also your why's in Capoeira. Today, I have the pleasure to have with, with, with us, uh, with me, my very first student in the U.S. here in, uh, in America, uh, after I moved to, the, to, to America. The first American that I wanted to teach Capoeira and, pa and uh, pass on not just my knowledge, but also my passion in and out of class. Um, not just as uh, my student, but also as my wife. And uh, this is Canarinha for Capoeira Brazil in Annapolis. How are you doing? I'm good, good. Just a little nervous. That's okay, that's okay. That's normal. Um, I, I usually cuss that though. No, just kidding. Uh, so we got to start from the beginning. I usually start all the interviews from the beginning. And uh, I just want to know how everyone started in Capoeira from day one until like right now. Tell me a little bit of your story from the very beginning. Okay, well... Um I met you in 2012. Uh, I heard that you did Capoeira and you were only staying in the U.S. for two months. So I asked the person that you knew if you could teach me Capoeira and if maybe like we could get together, do something. Um, the guy found out that I liked you and from there he kind of introduced us And um, we started talking, started hanging out. We didn't really do capoeira when you were here, but you came back and I would say I officially started training with you probably in 2014 was when I started training with you. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I also, I, I remember uh, in those days when I came came here, I was, I, sometimes I trained by myself. And uh, sometimes I did capoeira by myself in that yoga room, remember? Um, so when you saw me doing capoeira there, what, what, what do you thought about capoeira? When you saw capoeira the first time? Oh, I thought it was super dope. Like, you look so cool doing it. And I was just amazed about how you moved and, like, just your, like, energy and just everything about you I was in awe of and it really inspired me to want to start doing it and I think the thing that really like kick-started me wanting to start training capoeira with you is just your passion for it and it was very contagious like very contagious that's awesome that's awesome and uh that you say that you start training in 2014 I believe officially it was 2014. Um, and then I started training with you about two years, like, on. And then I stopped for about a year, I believe. And uh, how how do you feel in, like, your first class, like, personally, like, mentally? Like, how... Because Cabuera, at the, at the be very beginning... Um, capoeira, because you see it from outside, uh, capoeira seems pretty cool and all stuff, but once you step inside, because that's how I felt, uh, 
capoeira is very uh, overwhelming. But how 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 do you feel that day? Well, I didn't feel overwhelmed from seeing it. Um, I have a really extensive background in like fitness and that kind of industry, and my dad has been like into boxing and Krav Maga and martial arts like for his whole life. So for my whole life until I met you, I was used to martial arts. Um, so seeing Capoeira, I've heard of it, but I never really experienced it or seen it. So my first class, I was pretty nervous, just like right now. <laughs> but, and I was, I was really shy. So doing something different and out of my comfort zone was really like a big step for me. So I would say, not overwhelming, but I would say I was personally nervous. Um, but at that point, it was kind of like, well, I'm here. I better like rock it. There's nothing else I can do. You know, just learn the moves, enjoy it, have fun, and then like chill. Because like when I'm nervous, I like everything goes in one ear and out the other ear, and I'm like not paying attention. So I just had to really like focus and have fun for sure. I would say it was like the first class was very eye opening for me and really got me out of my comfort zone for sure. And from there, you definitely pushed me to get out of my comfort zone. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. But they, and, um, that's awesome. That, that's how I felt to the, uh, at the very beginning of my beginning days on, in Capoeira. Uh, that was completely different because the only background I had when I started was swimming class. That was the, and I did swimming class in 2000, the end of 2000. I quit because I was slacking and I was like never going to class, to the swimming class. Then I find out Capoeira, then I started going to Capoeira. But what caught my eyes for about Capoeira at least the beginning was all the moves, like all the jumping and the backflips and all stuff. Well, for you, what was the the eye catching for Capoeira? The kicks, for sure. I think all the kicks are amazing. Um, throughout the years, the the acrobatics got me, but the initial thing that got me were the kicks. That's that's pretty cool because uh, for me because that what I saw first from Capoeira was backflips and kicks, but the kicks what well, was like eye catching was like oh man I gotta learn this. That that was where, where when I started learning backflips and doing salto and all this kind of stuff. And um, and so you you have two thousand fourteen uh fourteen fifteen. 16, 17, and 18. So you are about to have five years in Capoeira, right? I would say like four and a half because there was a period of time where I didn't um, do Capoeira straight. I kind of like would be off and on. So I would say four, four and a half is probably like the right amount of time. Oh, cool, cool. And uh, on those uh, four years or like, until now, what do you like the most about Capoeira? I like the energy the most, I think. Um, all the people and like all the moves and everything that it brings to together when you're in the Hoda, I think it's that, that explosive energy and that makes me want more. You know, it's very, like I said, it's, when I saw you, it was very contagious, and I think your energy is what attracted to me to it. Um, so for Capoeira, whenever I'm in a hoda or whenever I'm at a festival or class, it's definitely the energy that like fires me up or brings me to it or tracks me to it. That's awesome. That that's that's uh, very common, especially with all the singing and 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 all those kind of stuff from from Capoeira, and. Uh, when was the first, what do you, because I remember 
uh, before you started Capoeira, you went with me to LA to Mr. Boneco's festival. And uh, so when you were there, besides be bored, <laughs> um, what, what do you think, or what used to be your thought at that moment when you saw everybody jumping, so many people, because I think it was like probably like a, over 100 people there. And uh, to us at 13, I remember. And uh, what was you, your thought on that moment when you were out of Capoeira? You you didn't step anything in, in Capoeira at that moment. Okay, well, let's say my first festival, I can definitely say it was overwhelming because being an outsider and going to a festival and not really being, like, or knowing about Capoeira and, like, the community and all that kind of stuff, I was definitely taken aback. Like, I was just, like, out of my element, didn't know what was going on. Um, so watching you, obviously, it was, like, all I was going to do. Like, because I was really excited and nervous and, like, a mixture of emotions. So I watched you and watched, like, what you did with other people and, like, how that interaction was. Um, but definitely, like learning how people were with each other was kind of cool like how how they got together in the hoda like instruments like all that kind of stuff is like really cool to see for someone that like has no idea like they've heard of capoeira but i mean just actually seeing and seeing the full event of it for the first time was very like wow that's so crazy like so when you said capoeira is overwhelming i would say Yes, because going to the first festival was very, like, crazy, insane, like, lots of energy, lots of things going on, um, and now I know. <laughs> so if you have, uh, and all this time, if you have one word to describe Capoeira, what, what word it would be? Contagious. I don't, I, no matter who it is or what it is, where where it is. If you're at a Capoeira event, no matter what group, who, or whatever, you're always going to be in, like, a Hoda. You know what I mean? Like, you always end up in a Hoda with some people. Like, not even just, like, a like a playing Hoda. It's, like, you're standing, you're talking, you know, you're, like, creating this group of people. And just the energy is contagious. Like, everything, like meeting new people, you know, learning new moves, everything is just, I would definitely say contagious, no matter where it is. I think that's my word. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool, because the, the, it is very contagious, especially when, you, when you're in the hall uh, and everyone starts getting excited. You start jumping around, or you see one jumping around, and that is like a chain reaction. Everyone starts jumping around, and everyone starts seeing, and... Uh, Everyone is just a lot of really cool energy. I can say for sure, like, I've never seen someone who was either in a bad mood before with Capoeira, like, stay in a bad mood with Capoeira. Like, once you start moving, once you start doing Jingo, once you start doing singing or playing the Berenbao or Pandero or whatever, you definitely, like, feel it. And you spread that out. And I just feel like that's the dopest thing ever. Do you, what about singing? How how do you feel about singing? Personally, I'm not the greatest singer, but I try, and you definitely like push me to try again in every aspect of life, and so I definitely want to be better at singing. Um, I feel like the people who do sing, and when they sing, they're amazing, and I'm just like oh my God, I'm your biggest fan because you're so, you're so good at singing. It's like, I want to get to that level, you know? Um, like who, 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 who will be your, your biggest singer? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, well, right now, the only person's songs I've been really listening to is Mr. Kim's because I've been trying to listen to more of our own Mr.'s songs. Okay. Um, trying to practice more and I definitely need more of like the basics kind of, kind of stuff but when I was in LA I really liked um, Tony Vargas okay. 
his voice was like amazing amazing and then our friend uh Christelle, yeah. she has a really good voice too like like yeah, shout out to Cristal, woo, <laughs> Capoeira Brazil, <laughs> but yeah, she has a really great voice too, and I like to listen to her sing, so if she wants to sing to me sometime, that's cool too. That's really cool, and uh, I'm 100% sure she's going to be super happy to to sing, in, so, to sing some Capoeira music to you, and uh, actually, uh, when I jumped to Capoeira Brazil, when I switched to Capoeira Brazil, um... I used to be that shy before when her and my instructor at that time when I started uh, Guarana, uh, they were like, if you're going to, if at some point you want to start teaching, you got to start singing. And uh, I used to sing so, so, so low, even with three of us, I was so shy to sing. And uh, I used to sing so low that they were standing probably like this close and they couldn't hear me. So that, until I eventually started again getting uh, getting out of my comfort zone, and I was like, "Man, this is hard. <laughs> this is hard, especially coming from uh, a very introverted kid to doing capoeira. I was fine performing in front of people, but singing or like putting the voice out in a very very low uh, high intensity is is was hard for me." And uh, I, I can see how 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 you feel w- with that. And uh, this this is a is a very more more to you instead of like all capoeiristas, because usually uh, all these feelings is a lot of capoeiristas go through through these feelings. But now you personally, why why Canarinho? Because uh, I I know why why i put you the canarinha name but now canarinha you explain to the world why canarinha well it's definitely not because i sing amazing but um i feel like in capoeira you people usually like base it off of like a look or like a characteristic of your personality or something that like at the moment has to do with you um so when you first met me, I was like partially blonde in my hair. I had like half blonde, half brunette. Um, I probably kept that for about three years. Yeah, yeah, like three years. And I think that's something that probably just popped up in your head. And you were just like, Canarina, because I'm blonde and um, small. <laughs> But I was I was really blonde when I was blonde, so I feel like that's probably a reason why you named me that. But I do like the name, and it's just hard for me to say. Still, say, say, say Canarina. Canarina. Oh, there you go. You say it. Yeah, but when I talk to people, they think I say Canada. So <laughs> I could be little Canada too if you want me to be. <laughs> well, you're nice. So I heard that Canadians are nice, and um. What so a lot of people no no everyone teach in cap in the capoeira world. Uh but you you have been living with me the last five years, almost six years. And uh you I'm pretty sure you can tell how much I love capoeira. Uh how for you from the student wife perspective, what do you see from there? Like from outside and uh, behind the scene and everything well first off it's more than love of capoeira you have like an obsession with capoeira um i would say you even love capoeira more than me but that's another story um i think it's awesome i think it's awesome that you know just partner wise like if you're you have something in common that you both love or both like really like to do. Um, I think it really helps your relationship, you know, and you can push each other both up during that. And Capoeira is amazing in that, but I also feel like sometimes 
it could be a double-edged sword because a lot of people in relationships would say, oh, this is a we thing. You know, like this is we. And I think people don't really realize like I am your student, you know what I mean? But I am also your wife. But because you're my teacher doesn't mean I have the same rights as you, you know? Um, I respect you in our relationship and I respect you in class. And those two are two different things. And that's what I personally think. Um, so when we're in class, I will teach you as my instructor. I'll teach you with the uh, most respect, follow all your moves, you know, because you're my instructor and because you push me to do things sometimes that I don't want to do, I have to teach you or not teach you. I have to treat you like with respect and, you know, no back talking to you or be, no attitude or like, I don't feel like doing that, you know? So it's like. We can talk about that afterwards, you know, be like, oh, why'd you make me do that? But I definitely feel like in the class, I have to teach you as my instructor. You know, I mean, the whole wife, husband thing, cool, that can happen afterwards. And it's great, you know, but don't do things in front of students, you know, like don't let your students see you fighting or, you know, even like uh, kissing, you know, ki like that's different. You know, you could, you could do that probably, but... I just feel, me personally, like, when I'm in class, you're my teacher. I'm going to teach you as my teacher. And then outside of class, you're my husband, you know. So there's more to that, too. You know, because you'll feel like, oh, these are our students. You know, like, like people will be like, oh, these are our students. It's like, no, I'm just a student. You know, these are instructor XYZ students. And I think people get offended that they don't lump them together sometimes. And, you know, if if the partner of whoever is just totally cool with that, that's totally cool. Yeah. You know, I think that's awesome if you can be like, okay, look, we're this level, though they're this level. That's just how it is, you know. But don't spite someone because they s teach you or treat you as such, if that makes sense. Yeah, the um, I've seen that a lot where where the instructor or master, which is fine, uh, but my personal personal opinion and uh, you doing this, I appreciate it a lot because uh, I've seen where people start combining that that instructor or master or whatever uh, position with wife or a girlfriend or so and they start bringing those problems to class and a uh, class become very stressful because you come to enjoy it, enjoy the class and then you see like boyfriend girlfriend fighting and uh, uh but the point of this is to people learn how to separate that so they, they don't bring that stress to class. Because, I mean, a lot of people go to class to, to enjoy. And at my point, we when, when I teach, I want people to come to my class to forget about problems or anything. It's just to, like, have fun and release that stress in my class. And I appreciate a lot. Yeah, going, going back with that, too, it's like... Um let's say you're together with a mestre or an instructor or whatever, and you're a little bit lower level, um, people are always going to compare you to how the person you are dating or married to is, you know, and you know, like it's hard. It, you know, they're always going to compare you to whoever that you're with. Um, but I feel like you just have to be strong in yourself and just to be like, I am me. My capoeira is me. Um, your own personality. I, yeah, your own personality, your own characteristics, your own movements. Because like, because I move a certain way doesn't mean this other person will move the same way, yeah. you know. And that's that's another part of Capoeira too is people always try to judge. I feel like. No, yeah, yeah, he's, he's completely right, and uh, same when when they are family too. If if there are siblings, they's like, oh, but they're siblings. Why well, they don't play the same? Or 
why this person is so high level and this person is low level is like everyone have uh, their own personality in capoeira same and that comes to the game uh, the game uh the game is the game you know and every single person brings their personality to the game which is that makes the capoeira unique thing and uh, makes the capoeira way way different than any other martial art and uh we call it martial art in the in the u.s but out of the u.s is more is something something more a little more cultural it's at least more like a culture um which is cool the first thing that you call martial art because obviously it's a lot of kicks it's uh, uh it's a graduation system and it's a uniform and all the stuff so you gotta keep that uh discipline in that part and um oh yeah um going again back on the subject because i i have a lot of opinions yeah, yeah. um i think you yourself have to be strong if you're especially if you're in a capoeira relationship um make your own capoeira friends you know go go to events you know even if you guys don't go to the same events together you know meet new people play games with different people um i feel like a good rule of thumb that you kind of enforced in me and not everyone shares the same belief but when we're in a festival or when we're in someone else's class you and i won't play together and for me i really appreciate that because I get to meet more people. I get to learn from other people's games, um, talk to people, you know, learn new moves. And I'm with you all the time. I get taught by you all the time. So learning something from a different group, a different class, you know, someone else is very, very awesome. And I just feel like people have to be, and it's nerve wracking too, because you know, you're, you're in my comfort zone. So I can look to you and be like, Hey, am I doing this right? Or like, you know, like what, what's going on? But, you know, for me to learn to ask people, be like, Hey, like, I don't know how to do this. Or like, how do I do this kick? Or how do I move to this position or whatever? Um, I feel like you both have to be pretty strong in your relationship. If you're in a capoeira relationship, because there's outside, outside factors, yeah, yeah. you know, no matter what, no matter if it's in a capoeira relationship, not in a capoeira relationship. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just think you have to be definitely, like, confident within yourself, you know, because things happen in Capoeira. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Is I always tell you that the uh, goal, and whenever I bring another student, like, I have brought another student to, to uh, the festivals, I always tell you guys that go play with different people and uh, go interact with different people you are not allowed to play with you in be, uh, among you guys because you guys see each other all the time in class you guys play with each other all the time in class and they for from my point of view the way to grow in capoeira you have to play with different kind of people because you get used to you get used to to the same pattern or right? you get used to, to the kicks you get used to to the, to the body language and you get you learn how to read that person that your friend in class and also when when you go and you interact with with those kind of people then you make another friend like you said and uh that's how i be i have been making so many friends here in the u.s because because of that because uh, i ask like hey let's let's go do this moment and uh, i try to not to repeat the same pe person if it's a big event if it's a small event i, I don't care I, I repeat the same person at the end of the day i'm not i probably won't see that person the next six months three months or whatever months or whatever time so that's that's why i usually tell you guys go play with different person is prohibited play among you guys so I have a question for you. So I know that you've dated Capoeira people in the past. You know, how does it feel to take or to meet someone that, you know, never did Capoeira, you know, never has any experience in that, but, you know, you brought them into it. How does it feel like one, 
um, dating someone outside of Capoeira, and then two, like your wife, like getting your wife into Capoeira and having a student as your wife. That's a good question. I know I got that question before. Uh, yeah, I dated I dated a uh, few people out uh, in within Capoeira, and uh, it's definitely at the beginning it's hard because. It's hard, but it's exciting at the same time because that person doesn't know about capoeira unless a person is interested in capoeira, of course, like you were at the beginning um, because you were looking at me with such a, like, big eyes. I got more excited because I want to show off. You know what I mean? And I'm like, hey, you know what I mean? Look, look how good I am. So I, I wanted to get you excited and be like, oh, my God, like, look, capoeira looks so cool. You know what I mean? And, uh, of course, that pumps pumps my ego <laughs> you know and uh makes me excited at that moment um because i didn't go to many festivals at the beginning when and when when i just moved here uh wasn't that hard because i was all the time with you uh there because i had capoeira almost all week long and uh I was in capoeira all day. I was in capoeira. Usually, I used to get out of school, get out of of class in high school, then go home, eat, shower, meet my friends to from capoeira to go capoeira. So I used to be in capoeira since probably like 2 p.m. until like 9 a.m. Almost all day there. Go home, repeat the, the next day. So I didn't get the, 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 I didn't want that chance to date someone out of Capoeira because that would take me out of Capoeira. If, because then that person's going to be like, well, you know, like, you know, sure, you don't spend time with me, you're not with me, uh, whatever, you know what I mean? I was like, well, I, I'm not going to date anyone out of Capoeira because... I gotta go be out of Capoeira to meet to meet this person to spend time with this person, but what I really like to do is Capoeira. So uh, I think that's why you are going to see a lot of people dating people in Capoeira because is Capoeira like gets you really really nice, you know what I mean? And is is like absorbs like on a good way absorbs who you are. Plus, like, now that I've been in Capoeira, it's, it is fun to be like, okay, after, after class, we're going to go out to eat, you know what I mean? Like, go, go do stuff, you know? And once you've been in it and once you're around people, it's like, it is fun to do stuff with a group, you know? It's like, we'll, we'll have our time, but now I understand. It's like, okay, you're, you're doing class, you're, you're doing Capoeira, and then you go out to eat right after class, and it's just, it's very fun, you know? And I understand that point where it's like, um... And people do it. I know people date outside of Capoeira too. Yeah. But I can see your point where you're like, oh, I want to stay here longer. You know, it's like it's like a kid who doesn't want to go home yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and if the person doesn't really understand that, I can see where it kind of gets hard. Yeah. So it's just easier or you prefer to spend your time in Capoeira, be with people who are other Capoeiristas who understand. Yeah. Because just... Imagine when when you were on that first festival, coming back to the first festival, when you were there, you were like, oh, man, you know what I mean? It's like you were there all day waiting for me to finish Capoeira. I didn't want it to leave, like you just, you just said. I didn't want it to leave. Uh, I want to keep going, keep talking about Capoeira, and like, but then I got to step out. Hey, you okay? You don't okay? Yeah, then I got to come back. It's not bad. Uh, I, I don't say that in a bad way. But like like you said, when you see a kid playing, playing, and playing, and playing, he, they don't want to stop. Even if it's like, hey, let's go eat. They don't want to even eat. You know what I mean? And uh, it's like always on, on that constant momentum. And once you get the momentum, you just want to keep going. So you're basically saying you're a kid. I always, uh, I, I'm always going to be a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I like being a kid, and uh, it's better to be young and fun than not. 
and <laughs> grumpy and all or like oh grandpa yeah, yeah i mean I, I like i like to have fun you know and uh, that's why i like capoeira it's such a dynamic uh energy it's not just like like karate like uh, uh no offense with people that does got the karate out there but for me my personal karate is uh, is kind, kind of flat and uh capoeira is so uh it's like like bruce lee says it's like water like we we adapt to everything and uh if we gotta be mellow and and slow we are slow or if we gotta be kind of like medium energy we're in medium energy or we, if we are gonna be hyper and jumping and very very energetic we're gonna be that way and uh, that's that's what i like about capoeira you can you have all the spectrums of of the energies now coming back to the wife and uh, uh and the question before i'm very happy that that you open your mind and your heart for me pull you into capoeira because when when we met and you i saw you doing cap uh, uh, uh your eyes getting bright getting the spark in your eyes when i was doing capoeira i saw you that you you were getting excited then i wanted to show you how awesome capoeira is for me and i wanted to see capoeira from this side of the window so now that you told me that that you understand a little bit more capoeira and you understand my passion and you understand why i like so much capoeira i'm very happy that you open for for that and uh, because that helps me more that motivates me more and uh, that push me even more and uh, as a wife that support of having that person there hey go go do this hey i know you can do it hey uh don't do this because that's gonna hurt you or hey um go train more because you're getting fat or or go or stretch more because you you are getting too stiff and uh, that's gonna affect you capoeira and uh that reminder there of me getting better because of capoeira because that's what i like i appreciate that a lot to be fair i've only called you fat like once or twice Okay, and I'm now going to uh, to to another another subject. I know many many benefits that capoeira have gave me. Uh, one of them is not be shy anymore. And I'm like, you always hear me. You always are gonna hear me saying this uh, because I'm very proud of of these skills that capoeira have uh, helped me to develop and uh, improve what kind of skills or or benefits capoeira has bring to your life um for sure not being like as shy or as nervous and i want to say like thank you to everyone i've met you know like in some way you have actually helped me to come out of my shell and not be as nervous or like self confident uh self-conscious in and Capoeira, you know, you, you've all definitely like made me a better person who I am today, whether it was bad or good, or, you know, you kicked me in the face, whatever. Like, I just felt like I learned so much from each person I've met, you know? And, um, so the whole shy thing being a main one for me, but also like my cardio, <laughs> like I, I don't like to do cardio. You know, I love doing like burpees and all that kind of stuff, but that's about it. So definitely Capoeira has kicked my butt with cardio because I'll be doing Jingas and then I'll start doing Armadas and my heart is racing. So definitely your endurance, you know, that Capoeira definitely helps with your endurance and you don't think about it. You know what I mean? You don't think about, oh, I have to do like, 20 um military frenchies you know or whatever move you know you don't have to think about it you just do it yeah. because it's it's going through your mind so yeah definitely that um being shy cardio what else what else 
Oh man, that's a good question. I'm trying to think. Um, I think another one is like not being scared to travel. You know, like it's definitely like it's definitely fun. Like in your podcast when you're talking to uh, Professor Congo, uh-huh. yeah? yeah, okay, which is really good. You should all go listen to it. Yeah. But um, he talks about traveling and getting out there and stuff like that. And um, when you travel, you you meet so many people. You know, I mean, you learn so many new things. And I just think that's another like top five of like why Capoeira is kind of awesome not kind of it is awesome yeah. um plus traveling so much fun like you see so much like so much stuff you know you go to new places you meet new people so they push you even harder yeah. it's it's just an array of amazingness yeah. and I definitely feel like if you're shy or introverted or whatever you know, definitely try Capoeira because it's going to push you out of your comfort zone. You're going to go travel. You're going to meet new people. And if you like Capoeira just because of like working out and the fitness, dude, it is going to kick your butt because it is crazy intense, but amazing and good. And I cannot say enough good things about it because it's a whole body mind experience, you know? And I feel like I kind of, ran off with the question yeah. so <laughs> but it's about experience it's about like what do you get from experience that was that's why it's capoeira experience you know yeah it's just funny because you say you say a question and then i have all these things in my head yeah. and i want to talk about all of them Welcome. you know um yeah you know i'm really amazed by all the people i've met you know from, from mestres to uh, white cords and everything in between because everyone is different and everyone's amazing um, and everyone has a little piece of something you can learn from no matter what level and I'm gonna probably say something that's not like like a favorite but I feel like no matter what level you are you can definitely learn something from everyone yeah, for sure. and you know people who are on a high horse I think that's cool, whatever whatever floats your boat, you know. But everyone started from somewhere, you know. And I feel like you should not forget where you started from because the people who helped who helped build you up, you know, they were there with you too. And you have to remember everyone everyone starts somewhere. It always re restarts. It always continues. It always flows. Yeah, on the point uh, that talking about like, don't forget where you come from or where you started. That's why I wanted to bring bring you as a uh, as a student, and uh, that's why I want to bring beginners and I want to bring masters, because you're right. And uh, I talked to these of, of uh, with some different people in the in the podcast where sometimes some people forget where they come from and they they think they are on a pedestal and uh in the i understand the rank uh, in, in capoeira is awesome and uh you have that respect and uh and you deserve the respect but you also got to respect those beginners where they they started from where uh you came from there and uh, a lot of people want to to talk to you too, you know what I mean? And they want to learn from you and they want to shake your hand, take a picture with you and uh, when when you are up there and uh, they admire you and they follow you and they le- they want to learn from you. And uh, that's why I want to bring all, all the people I can from the beginners to the masters I'm, uh, all together to share that experience to to have them speak about that experience yeah i mean out of all the people that i've met and i know you've met countless number of people and there's so many people in capoeira that we haven't met you know um i would say my favorite person like i don't know if i can say this but 
every time I met Mr. Jalon yeah. from Capoeira Londa, he yeah. has been so nice. Yeah. You know, I mean, he he didn't talk to me like I'm a yellow cord or I'm a white cord, I think, at the time when I met him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he talked to me just like as a person, yeah. you know, and for me, that was like the first time where I was like, whoa, this is really cool. Like, I felt like mutual respect. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I just thought that was so awesome, you know, just, just to be a good human to another human, yeah. you know what I mean? And even if, you know, you do have a higher rank and stuff, I think people are, st- and a big name, you know what I mean? You are still a human being, yeah. you know, and to show kindness to whoever it is, I think is amazing, you know? So for me, when I met him and he even remembered my name yeah. and I was like, Oh my gosh, like I I'm amazed. I'm like fangirling. Like you're you're awesome. Yeah. Like, you know, like to remember my name, me, yeah. you know, like yeah. little old me. Yeah. But um just just meeting like higher ranked people or no matter who, but I'm saying higher ranked people right now. Yeah, yeah. Um and they show you just the same amount of kindness just like you're just a normal person, you know? Yeah. And I still will respect a mestre, a professor, a professora, you know, instructor, instructora, you know, even if they're higher than me, I will still respect them yeah. because obviously you got there for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your hard work, yeah. it paid off, you know, like you are awesome. You're a teacher or whatever for a reason. Yeah. So people who are lower should respect you, yeah. but I feel like the respect should also be two ways, yeah. you know, like, like, like everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, shout out to Mr. Jalon as well. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Jalon too is like, Mr. Jalon, I hope you listen to this one day. And uh, we respect you a lot and I, I admire you a lot. And uh, for wrap it up, the last two couple of questions. What, I think that you already said it, but what would you recommend to Capoeiristas out there? Don't hold back. Um, don't be scared to do what you want to do. Or if you want to try something, don't be scared. Like, don't hold yourself back because of what you think other people will think or other people will judge you or if you look silly. You know what I mean? Like we literally just said, everyone starts from somewhere. Um, they've been in your shoes. And I felt that. I felt like, oh, I'm going to get judged if I do an awu or a cartwheel, like, super wrong, you know? Um, so, yeah, I just feel like, don't hold yourself back, man. Just jump and you're going to learn, you know. You're going to become amazing too. That's awesome. That's the, that was really cool advice. I like I can tell you learn from me. No, just kidding. <laughs> and also just as a woman, I think that oh, yeah, capoeiristas that are women and they're so dope to be doing this martial art, you know, because it's not, it's, it's awesome. You know, it's awesome to see a strong, powerful woman doing Capoeira. So I just want to shout out to all the strong ladies out there. You are super dope and, you know, keep at it because I'm going to probably fangirl over you too. Nice. Nice. That's really cool. And, um, what are your social medias so cap, uh, people out there can see you doing some capoeira on your social media? Um, well, I do a little bit of everything on my social media, but it's at Jesse J E S S I Mataran M A T E R A N, and that's because I'm married to you. <laughs> because Kashishi. Well, and uh, I'm very happy that that you share all that experience. And uh, definitely we talk about some stuff that we don't really talk at all. Um, but I'm I'm happy. Hopefully uh, I get to to have you again and to share our kind of experiences. Uh, not just with me, if also with people out there so they can learn from someone else, not just instructors. Because like I always said, uh, like I always say, uh, we learn even in the Hoda, out of the hall that we learn class, we learn out of class, we learn watching videos, or we learn even talking, chatting. 
And uh, that's why I'm bringing this podcast to everyone out there so they can learn while they drive, while they take a shower, or while they cook, or whatever. Uh, I think that's awesome what you're doing. And not just as your wife, but as a person who's been listening to your podcast from day one, um, I think it's awesome what you're doing. You know, and I think people who listen to your podcast can agree that it's a whole experience, like just like your name. You know, I mean, Capoeira is a different world and there's so much to it. There's history, there's music, there's movements, you know, and it's you got to learn like all of it, you know, to really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I feel like I've had so much more to say. But it's just, you know, all up in my mind. So I just want to say thank you, uh, Instructor Kashishi, for teaching me everything that you've taught me. Um, as your first student, I really do appreciate you and all the knowledge you've bestowed upon, upon me um, and the person you've kind of helped me become today. And thank you to everyone out there that I've met. Like I said earlier, you've probably... Not probably, but you have helped me as well. Um, so yeah, but big shout out to my husband, Instructor Kashishi, and you're doing awesome. Like keep going at it, keep being you, and don't let anyone stop you. Thank you so much for being here. Bye. Peace out. Peace. All right, I just want to share something with you really quick. If you are listening to this and you teach or assist to a capoeira class, or even if you have an event coming up, I want to help you. I want to help our capoeira community because there's nothing, nothing, nothing more important to me than help our capoeira community. Because classes are more fun when there's more people to share this, this ashe, this energy is so awesome that Capoeira has. So I want to share your class or event in our podcast. So reach out to us with school name or any information on how people can find you and send it to our email, podcastcapoeira at gmail.com. That's podcastcapoeira at gmail.com. And I will share that information here in our podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you like this podcast. If you did, take a screenshot, send it to someone that knows about Capoeira or of course wants to learn. Share it everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, everywhere. And help us grow this community with a subscribe. Thank you so much. Peace.